You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is... The Sales Energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the Sales Energizer, Dan Jordan. You know, this is this is what I stretch. This is my stretching period. <laughs> it's a perfect stretch. <laughs> That's what right? I do. You know what? On the intro, there's that one guy, uh, Tom Nixon, who has the potato. Yeah. Why don't we get him to do it with the potato hand? The arms have to be up for the potato guy. Oh, I mean, yeah, we'll have to have the, Tom back on the show, the, and the, he can the, he can raise Mr. Potato Head's hands. You no, know? oh, you look good. Did you get a haircut? I got them all cut. Yeah, hey, you know. look at that! I got this little wheelie thing going on here. Right well, now. you know what though? I'm I, I'm nowhere near dressed to the nines like you are. Compliments of Mark Fonseca. What a yes. great show last week. Um, you you know, know, that was I actually uh, I didn't plan on telling you this story, but being that we're so close with all uh, with our listeners here, I've got I got to share this with you. I I just had to get out of the office. I'm sick of this, and so I I had cold call somebody and I talked to them and blah, blah, blah. I said, you know, screw it. I'm just going to go over there and stop in and see if, in this case, if they want to sell their business. That's what, that's what I was doing. And so I um, I just went out there. It was downtown Atlanta. And I walked into the store and doesn't know me from Adam. I don't even know where that phrase come from. Why is Adam... Is that Adam that like would be, Adam I guess, the, Yeah, okay, that was the yeah. first. So, so he doesn't know me from Adam. By the way, what did Adam say to his wife on December 24th? Oh, God. It's Christmas, Eve. All right. Stay with me. They're coming fast. That's a perfect dad joke. Anyway, I walked in. I walked in and uh, I, I told the guy, I'm the guy who talked to you on the phone a couple days ago. And he goes, oh, yeah. Blah, blah. And then I'm talking. To you. He welcomes me into the back of the room. We have this big conversation, shows me his books, his papers. We, you know, we, we came to some you know, friendship and decision. And I'm thinking, why the heck? And it's because I look so darn good. I mean, because he just I, I like overwhelmed him. I'm t- that's what these clothes do for you. It's unreal. I don't know if you give yourself enough credit. It couldn't all just be because of the, maybe, I think you're, maybe you have more confidence because you have those clothes. I, I, don't know. I may be, but you can't, that's the same. It's all the same package, isn't it? It no, is. Just, Speaking of cold calls, uh, you know, yes. we're on a live show. You might want to hit the mute button, but this is um, my son. Okay. And he knows that I'm, I do this at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays and yet right. zero respect kids today. You can't so, trust them. For our viewers today, and uh, you're popping on uh, here, this is a special, you know, they're all special, right? This one is a little bit more special because we have a, uh, not only a great guest, but, uh, you know, someone that, I mean, I was, when I first moved to Atlanta and, uh, you know, I came down here in 99 There was, you know, television and network television and local network television was, was, you know, during that time was a lot more popular. We were always in the mornings. We always had the morning show on and we always had and it was television was a little more part of our lives than it is uh, admittedly now. But one of the people that was a part of me coming to Atlanta and watching television in the morning is actually on the show today. And I got to meet this guy and just found out, you know, when you see someone on television, you sometimes you think to yourself, I wonder if that person is as great 
and as nice and as friendly as they're coming off on the screen. And when I met this guy, um, he absolutely was that and more. Um, and so I'm just, I'm super excited to be able to have our guest on here. Yes. Today. And he's got big things because he says he's going to make me famous. And so that's how it does. Ooh, so we work cut out for him. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll do just that. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to uh, to welcome uh, the one, <laughs> the only, um, the executive director of uh, Mark Hayes Consulting, Mr. Mark Hayes. Mark, thanks so much for coming on, man. You got to put your arms in there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking strong feeling strong gentlemen what a pleasure to be here thanks for having me well, <laughs> you, you were saying earlier that you played football in college yeah i played football at howard university um 1987 yeah. mid-eastern yeah. athletic yeah. conference champs i've got the ring upstairs to prove it i mean wow. uh, and i love the game I just, it's just when i got to college i found that everybody else was good too you know, I thought I was much better than I was in high school, <laughs> but everybody could play. Everybody could run. Everybody was good. I mean, it was it was a humbling experience. So uh, but a great experience, a great learner, um, a great learning experience. And um, it, it was there were so many life lessons that we learned. Um, just from our coach, we were coached by a guy named Willie Jeffries, who's a who's a black college football legend and and just a great man. As a matter of fact, our team was inducted in 2014 into the Howard University Athletic Hall of Fame. And um, you know, if we had a real producer on this show, there'd probably be a big picture of that. Yeah, absolutely, and all the video and, yeah. and the documentary. That's no, right. <laughs> <laughs> but but our two there were two teams um the 87 team and the 93 team and um and we probably had 60 or 70 guys that showed up for it the 93 team which was the black college football national championship and a very very talented team with jay walker who ended up playing in the nfl um those guys maybe had 15 20 guys but we came back because of coach jay and we all, I mean, Coach Jay treated us all like sons and there were a hundred of us, you know, but he treated every single one of us like his, his child and, and he wanted us to do well. I mean, he would see you on campus and say, are you getting your lesson? You better be getting your lesson, Mark, because you know I'm watching. And he was watching. <laughs> now, did, did, he, he, did he see you when you made the big time on Good Morning Atlanta? He was so proud of me. He saw me, I think he saw me here in Atlanta. And then when I saw him at another event, um, at a homecoming in DC, he said, I saw you on TV, you look good, boy. <laughs> and and, and that, was all, that was all I needed, you know, for Coach Jay's acceptance and, and for Coach Jay to, to be proud. That's because that's all we really wanted to do was make Coach Jay proud. Because that's, that's the kind of feeling you had when you played for him. And um, there, there's there's no greater like I'm on text chains with guys that I played with. I mean, we're that close um, where we regularly. Yeah, where we regularly communicate with each other. And it takes and, a special kind of person to be a football coach, to be a college football. Yes. Coach. And yes. Coach Jay sounds like a true leader. Like you Absolutely. have to. Nobody's just going to follow you up a hill because you happen to have the title head coach. Right. right. There is so much that goes into that. And, um, I just, uh, you know, they're wired differently, totally I differently. Yeah. than yeah. most people. But if you've got someone that also has the wiring to be a leader, those are the ones that are the best. Oh, incredibly special human beings. And, so here's um, the question. did yeah. you ever, when you were on good morning America, <laughs> was that the type of guy mm -hmm. that you would get onto the show to interview? Yeah, so we we you know the the great thing about being uh, on the morning show in Atlanta was that we had access to so many amazing people. I mean, from Arthur Blank to Tom Hanks to Denzel Washington to Cuba Gooding to Beyonce to uh, uh, George Clooney. I mean, because Atlanta was a globe is still a global city and people love to come here and love to do business here and there was so much going on here. You've got um, just, just the pick of the litter 
when it comes to um, the famous faces that come through Atlanta and want to be on television to promote whatever they're doing, to promote their show, to promote you know their business venture. Um, Andrew Young is another uh, amazing individual that we had a chance um, to talk with. Hosea from Hosea Feed the Hungry. Mm. Um, so many amazing stories, especially when you talk about um, the civil rights movement and um, some of the many, many people involved in it. Reverend, Reverend Warnock, I remember um, interviewing him when he first took over for Dr. King and asking him about the pressure he felt at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. And uh, I remember interviewing Governor Sonny Perdue and, and Governor Roy Barnes. I mean, so, you know, we had um, just an amazing experience and so many incredible people that you would talk to. You know, you might talk to G. Gordon Liddy one day, and then the next day you're talking to um, Leanne Rimes, you know, and, 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 and you have to have that range because the viewers, you know, the BS detectors have been out for a long time, right? So people can tell when you're faking the funk, right? They can tell when you, when you don't know what you're talking about, right? So, you know, I'm not necessarily a, a country music fan, but God, you would have thought so by watching me on TV. I mean, Blake Shelton was like my buddy, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, Blake, you know, I'm, I was on a Delta flight listening to your music. And he said, man, the first time I heard my voice on a Delta, you know, airlines flight, right. you know, he's like, I thought I had made it. And so, you know, when you get to talk to people like that, it's always nice. And like you were saying in the intro, to see that they are real people and, and, and they come across um, just as they would on screen. Right. So how did how did that work? Did did Blake Shelton call you? Did G. Gordon Liddy call you? How did how did these people wind up being interviewed on your show? Yeah. So a lot of people have teams that set them up for success when they go to a city. Right. They know they're coming to Atlanta, you know, two, three months in advance. They say, OK, where can we go to get exposure? Right. This is this is all part of the public relations, media relations yeah. machine that you need to help make your brand famous. Right. Now, having some name recognition already helps because when you call the booker at Good Day Atlanta and she says, oh, yeah, I know Bruce Cutler, the 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 uh, former attorney for John Gotti. I know him. Yeah. He's got name recognition. Oh, he's got a book. We're definitely interested. So if you have name recognition, it makes it easy. But you've also got to have a, a compelling why to be on the show, right? Because we've got, it's a, it's a money-making exercise for us. We've got to have um, a reason to make the viewer stick around until 940 or, or now they go until 11 o'clock. So 1015 to make them stay because we're selling advertising. Right. So we've got to be able to say, hey, Dan Jordan's coming on the show, you know, and here's why he's coming. You don't want to miss this. So it is it is vitally important that when we give that one line tease that people say, oh, I heard that. I can't afford to miss this. And, and, remember, and that's what you do now, what you do in, in the real world now, your goal is to take people who I guess are subject matter experts and exactly. get them the fame so they could earn the living that they want to earn. Absolutely, because you've got to tell your story. And what social media has done for us is given us the ability to tell our story, not only on traditional broadcast, but it helps people like the guest booker at Good Day Atlanta go find out exactly who you are, right? So when, when you say, hey, Dan Jordan wants to come on the show, Chris Stone is going to come on the show. First thing we do is hit the Google machine, right? And we go see what pops up. Right. Is it something crazy? It's it, are you out here, you know, shooting kitty cats with a BB gun? Well, then we might not have you as a guest on the show. But if you're giving us content and, and giving us news we can use and uplifting content and stories to help us get to know you, then we can figure out how to tease you, how to position you in our shows, what value you might have to our viewer. Because remember, we have a very distinct picture of what the viewer looks like for Good Day Atlanta, you know, for, for 11 Alive in the morning, you know, for WSB. We all know exactly what the, what the viewer looks like for our shows. So we wanna make sure that if it is a white female outside the perimeter with 2.3 children and some college, well, we wanna make sure our guests are talking to her. 
So, so that you part, know all that? Oh, we do so much research in local television news. We spend more money on research than anything else because we've got to know who's watching so we know what to give them. If we don't give them what they want, they go look for it somewhere else. And remember, now you've got thousands of choices in the morning. Remember when you and I were growing up, we had channel two, four, five, seven, nine, and eleven. That was it. Right. Oh, you're in the from the Northeast. That's yes. right. Yes. <laughs> and then on the dial, it was a dial. You're right. Like sometimes the numbers would break off, and so right. you knew because four and five were next to okay. each other. So this is this is when we lose our millennial crowd right here, because right. right? when Dan starts talking about the I dial know, and the tin foil. I was the, the channel changer, you know, the the, the remote control. My dad, yeah. Daddy, 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 come here, come here, come here, quick, quick. <laughs> I was the remote control. I hear you. A great point. It's like, you know, so many people are thinking, okay, well, I'm I'm this type of person and I've built my my brand and I have this product or I wrote this book and now it's time, you know, to, you know, do this whole publicity thing. And so now I want to get on television and, and so they don't, they don't understand what you're saying is right. that, you know, you can't just show up because you have a book, right? right? You have to, you have to have something compelling that's going to grab someone's attention that because there's so many other screens going on right now that you can't, if you think you're going to get a, a you know, a network to have a conversation with you and have them on their show, you better have, you gotta, you gotta be a, a great salesman, right? You right. can't, you have right. to be a brand that is going to attract the viewers that they want to watch the ads. So does it need to be topical? I mean, like compelling for the moment? Like, yes. let's say I wrote a book on uh, how to do business in the Corona age. Absolutely. That's what we're looking for, right? Because think about it. So many people are out there looking for work now, right? Because husbands have lost their job. So even if, if our viewer is that female, she wants some information so she can help her husband get back on his feet. So if you've got something that's of value to the viewer, remember, ask yourself, what's the value to the viewer? What kind of value am I offering to their audience? And that's how you pitch, right? That's because if, if, you've, if you've got something that viewer needs or wants, we want to hear about it and we want to tell your story. You know that that's true. I my uh, longtime assistant Ginger, uh, who loves you by the way. She's <laughs> I mean your biggest fan. I told her. Oh, tell her thank she, you. She, the first thing she said to me is that guy's got a smile. It, it warms me on a cold winter day. I mean she was very poetic. Oh, thank that, you. That's I've heard, I've, I'm talking about the one that that's they're right. That's right. But she used to say that every time somebody went on there with their book, she would buy the book. She would buy the book from the party every single time just because she wanted to support, you know, a local person there. Yes. The well, and that's the advantage of local TV, right? Because, you know, it's tough to get on Oprah's book club, right? But, you know, Oprah would make people, you know, bestsellers, right? We give you a little bit of exposure locally and people like Ginger buy the book. So when you have your book signing, you get a nice little crowd there, right? And it gives you a little momentum. And now you can build off of that because... You know, people are so busy now, you know, and, and post pre pandemic, you know, nobody was ever home. Right. So now they're going to find that appearance that you have on Good Day Atlanta online so you can share it throughout your ecosystem. And that's how you build the momentum with it, because, you know, if you're not going to be home at 945. Look, you're, I mean, it's a pandemic. You're in your office. So right? is this what you coach your clients? Is this what you do? You absolutely. So Absolutely. So, you get, so if I'm an accountant or a lawyer or a, uh, a chiropractor or any sort of a landscaper, but I want to get more business and more, you'll, you'll help me and coach me what to do when I get on a Right. A so we'll do the media training, right? But first, what we do is we drill down and we find your value. We find out what do you have to offer when we go out here with your message, right? And, and, and number two, we got to figure out who do you want to talk to? Where is your audience? Your audience may not be Good Day Atlanta, maybe WSB, or it may be a very hot podcast that we target, right? Because they're, 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 we have these subject matter niches now, right? Like your show, right? If people want information about how to become a better salesperson, about how to engage, how to get that energy, they can come to your show 
and, and just watch you do what you do. So if you're if you're an accountant, there are podcasts out there, you know, focus towards people who are in accounting. If you're a mental health expert, there are podcasts out there. If you're a millennial mental health um, um, advocate, there are podcasts geared toward that. So we have these subject matter niches that that you can tailor your story to. And then once you figure out who your audience is and where they live, now we drill down on how to be effective with that communication so we can establish that connection. Well, right? Okay. So I got two more questions. One yeah. question and a favor. So uh, uh, first of all, can you say hi to Ginger Hall? She loves Hi, Ginger you. Hall. How are you today? <laughs> Thanks okay. so much for the lovely compliment. I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> it's cool. And secondly, do you have any stories of anybody that, you know, we, we only see the good stuff, mm. but do you have any kind of bloopers, any kind of challenge of people, you know, answer a question, you know, so tell me this story. No, I'm not in the mood. I mean, just well, like yes to no good people. Yeah. You know, John Lovett, the comedian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I loved him in his movies, right? Because he's got this, you know, weird kind of wry sense of humor that's that really is just funny to me. Like I, I enjoy that kind of humor. And I got to interviewing him on a movie junket out in California, and he was giving me these one-word answers. And I was like, Are you kidding me? And then I had Dennis Leary. Oh, you know, yeah. okay. oh he's great. Oh, yeah. So not so much, right? Oh. So, <laughs> so, so his his PR people send us um, this, uh, you know, the, the fact sheet on the new project that he's working on. Well, the information on there says that he's doing a, uh, a new movie with uh, the King of Queens. Um, what's Hart? his name? The King of Queens. Kevin Hart? No, no. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Nealon. Or is it? No, it's not Nealon. It's oh. not Nealon. The, um, the fat guy? Yeah, the big guy. Yeah. Well? The funny yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so I'm reading this introduction to him. Now, I'm like the fourth or fifth interviewer. If we're on satellite, I'm in Atlanta, he's in LA or New York or wherever he is. And so I said, and, you know, Dennis has this brand new movie coming out with um, Kevin from King of Queens. And he's like, well, wait a minute, what is this? You know, why do you keep asking me these questions? I'm not doing any new project. With and he just goes off on me. And is this live? Me. No, we were recording. Oh, okay. Wow. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, dude. This is this is the information I have in front of me. Well, it's raw. It's and he <laughs> just starts going off on me. And I'm like, dude, I'm reading what your people said. Yeah. You know, so have your people talk to my people. All right. And I think <laughs> and I said, I think this interview is over. What about you? <laughs> wow. wow. All right. So, so we've we've got we've got a couple of uh questions for Mark. Um, awesome. Um, so, uh, Doug Lehman in layman's terms, um, is, is, uh, tuned in and wants to know what the biggest adjustment you made from going from TV to consulting. You know, the biggest adjustment was number one, believing in myself because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and number two, the best thing I did for myself to, to assist with that adjustment was get a business coach to help me mm -hmm. figure out, um, what business people like you guys, entrepreneurs, need from someone with my skill set, right? Because I didn't know, you know, how to apply my skill set in corporate America, or you know, how um, to to apply it and then market it. So I got a business coach. She helped me put everything in, and I felt so much better and so much more confident once I did that. Once I had some offerings and was able to go to people and have sales conversations, which I don't like, by the way, but once I was able to do that, I felt so much better. And things changed literally like that. Within weeks, I had customers. Yeah, and right. it, was, it was amazing. She was so good at what she did and so good at helping me understand what I could do for people and what value I had. So the, the, the biggest adjustment I made was finding value in my skill set. Yeah, that 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 kind of freaks me out to think of someone who's such a monster like you. Uh, I mean, just you know, on TV, I mean, you exude total confidence. And the first thing you said is I had to start believing in myself. Yeah. Dude, you're on TV. Oh, this yeah. is what people are saying. So, you know, what we think of ourselves and every salesperson is the same way. Right. So, right. Well, it's, yeah. you know, it's different because, 
you know, when I'm on TV and I'm like, when I'm doing this, I'm in my element, babe. This is what I do, right? But you get me out here walking around with you guys among salesmen, you know, and having sales conversations and marketing and 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 creating packages, you know, I mean, and, and getting to the people who can say yes and write the check, you know, there there are secrets, you know, and and you know this 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 path that you have to navigate in order to be successful. And look, you know, I'm married to sister girl from Queens, right? So she puts a little <laughs> pressure on me, right? <laughs> it's my honey from college. She's my sweetheart, but I'm telling you, she doesn't play, right? So I had to figure it out quickly. That's terrific. Yeah, well, so, so what you need to do, uh, what every salesperson needs to do, is really to talk about the outcomes. And you got to get right. your potential prospect or client to envision themselves being that famous person, being on TV like they do. And probably the best way to do that is for you to play with me. We'll do a okay. little role play. So why don't we just... Okay. Chris Stone here, my yeah, producer. Yeah, let, let's do a let's uh, let's do a special a little... interview. Me, just a question or two on how to, I'm, I have a new program on how to do business during uh, this uh, coronavirus time. Okay, and so that's what you know about me. And so, Chris, go ahead and set up the show. Okay, uh, so everyone, don't uh, you know? Don't change your dial. Don't uh, don't you know that that's what that was that Dan was talking about earlier. That's a dial. Don't change your dial because. Uh, we're going to have a little special segment here on the on Dan Jordan Live. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Well, if your sales team sucks and you don't know what to do, call D. 678-910-9912. Call D. 678-910-9912. Wow. Interesting stuff. I love it. So much energy. Deeds, that's what I love about you anyway, is your energy. So if we're going to role play here, right? Your specialty is selling during the pandemic, making this the best year ever, even though it seems and feels like the worst. So let's drill down. Let's think about what kind of value you can offer the audience. First of all, um, what do you think is the biggest roadblock to people's success in sales during the pandemic? That is an awesome question. And really, you could have just stopped saying by, by just stop by saying, what do you think is the salesperson's biggest roadblock? Because it's always the same thing. And it's the thing that you said before. It's your head. Mm -hmm. uh, by nature, we kind of enjoy looking for the excuses. Uh, nobody likes an excuse better than the person that's giving it. Right. And they, you can come up with a million different reasons why something won't work. But the successful people, the real winners, and they're all around you. People like you, people that are on TV all the time, are always just looking for the reason to make it work. And they're not willing to fail. And right now, during this time, you have an entire population of people that are have, have a great excuse to sit back and do their natural, lazy life. And so for the person who really wants to succeed, it's one step. It's just making your first step and going while everybody is sitting back. This is yeah. the best time in the world for someone to start a business for themselves right wow. now. Wow. Okay. So number two, um, how can you teach me and how can you teach our audience that skill set, that, that, that most important skill that they need to be successful? You and know, you gotta, I, and, here, was, and here's why we do that. So you yeah. can clearly and succinctly state that when you get on TV, right? So you would want to have that in one line. And, and then people can say, oh, I can do that. Make sense? Yes, that's awesome. I can answer, you know, when, when I was a boy, it's again, it's back into you getting to the right mindset. When I was a boy, I had a, my dad, who was like a, an immigrant from France and a Jewish guy. And so whenever he talked to me, I'm talking his accent. And uh, when I was uh, graduating high school, he said, so Danny, what are you going to do with your life? And uh, I told him I was going to get a job or whatever. And he said, OK, that's fine. He goes, remember this. He says, Danny, in this country, you have a job, you have one customer, and he's called the boss. And if he decides to fire you one day, you got nothing. But he says, Danny, if you're a salesperson, if you're self-employed, he says, well, then you have 100 bosses, but they're called customers. And if one of them fires you, who cares? You got 99 more. 
You see, success comes with the understanding that you're trying to earn an income, not a job. And when you look for income sources, you'll find them. Right. If you look for jobs, you're always at the risk of getting, you got one, we got one customer. There you go. Now, I'm going to tell you why that's an excellent answer, because that brings us to the next portion of my training that I would get into, and that's storytelling. And you know when I heard that story? When was when that? You, when you and I met at the building in Dunwoody, you shared that story with me while we were sitting down having lunch. And I remembered it. Make it memorable. You know, great stories have a beginning, middle, and end, just like you just put their nice, succinct, nice and tight. That's great content, by the way, if you're putting it on your social media, but it's memorable, right? And now people can relate to you. I can relate to the conversations that I have with my dad about life advice and what I wanted to do with my life. You know, my dad was all about living with purpose, you know, and, and you got to live and consistency. So, you know, those conversations, those stories are memorable because everybody can relate to them. And when you become relatable, people know, like, and trust you, right? And that's your goal, whether it's conventional um, broadcast, traditional broadcast, or whether it's content for social media. If they know, like, and trust you and you're consistent, they'll come back for more and then they'll start to patronize you. I see that's good business, Coach. Thank you so much. <laughs> Come on back. I mean, your sales team sucks and you don't know what to do. Call D six seven eight nine one zero nine nine one two. Call D six seven eight nine one zero nine nine one two. <laughs> thing. If the not only an intro but an outro. See that's why Chris Stone is such a real a real pro. He gets oh, his man. <laughs> well, that was great, guys. I it, seriously, that was um, it, it, it was weird at first. It was like, are we do, are we is this really happening? And and uh, but oh, yeah. I was, was see, he but you see how naturally he slipped into host mode. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. But that that's great coaching. So tell me, how does somebody get a hold of you, or how does someone get started if they're basically uh, if they want to get famous and they want to get on TV and they want to tighten up their story. Uh, how do you help them? Or yeah, how can I'm they get Marquez, on? MarquezConsulting.com is my website. Um, I'm on all the social media. You can look for Marquez TV on Instagram, Facebook, and um, LinkedIn at Marquez. And, you know, I, info at MarquezConsulting.com is my email address. And, you know, I, I, I am regularly engaging in sales conversations. And, like, this, this pandemic has not slowed me down. As a matter of fact, I was talking to my wife just last week about hiring an assistant, a virtual assistant, you know, to help me keep up um, with some of my workload because I'm, I'm really busy. And like, there was a day last week where I was just slammed and I felt great about it. Like at the end of the day, I was like, wow, it's like 8.30 and I'm just now getting off my computer and I, am, I couldn't be happier, you know, about being so busy because, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't quite sure. Like when I walked away from that television newsroom for the very last time, I was like, okay, um, I know where I'm going, but I kind of don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I'm going real fast. And so um, to finally um, see it all coming together and, 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 and beginning to understand um, with some effectiveness what entrepreneurship is, um, it's a good feeling. And, and, you know, you get more, more confident as you go, as you get that, those customers, you become even more confident. And, um, and once you start um, getting folks to that outcome where they're looking at it saying, whoa, this worked, you know, this paid mm -hmm. off, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's nice to be able to provide that back. Cause you know, and, and that was one of the biggest things that I, that I hesitated. I was like, well, what should I charge? And how do I know if it's worth it? Yeah, right. and I, I love the fact that you uh, you do uh, and and have done what a lot of entrepreneurs um, are afraid to really do, and that is realize okay, there's just too much to do, and this is something I may not be as good at, so I'm gonna outsource this. I'm going to I'm going to not be afraid to 
hire a business coach. I'm not going to be afraid um, to, you know, get a virtual assistant and to start outsourcing these things. And it allow it frees you up to do mm-hmm. what you excel at. And it's obviously paying off for you. And it's, um, uh, you know, it, again, it couldn't happen to a, a greater guy. And we got oh, guys, we do you. have some, we do have some questions, some oh, really good questions. You still got time? Sure. Yes, right. absolutely. I don't know if you've got to be on another show. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, this is coming from explore skills, blending business and education. Oh, that was a plug okay. there. Um, nice, <laughs> nice, nice sales job there. Explore skills. Is there such a thing as engaging too early with a PR consultant? Absolutely not. This this is my frat brother oh, from, okay. from Omega Sci Fi. I love it. Melvin Anderson from the 10th D. All right. I was made the second D. What a pleasure to meet you, Melvin. Um, but no, it's 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 never too early to engage um because you want to create your strategy. Um <clears throat> now, what does your budget allow for? Right? If you don't have an immediate need for media relations or public relations then I would say develop that need first. You know, what do you want to accomplish? Because, um, you know, they can be very expensive. Public relations experts can be very expensive. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, uh, conduct PR campaigns necessarily. I get you ready to go on television and get you ready to help tell your story on television. But PR people um, can be anywhere from three to five K a month. So if you are just going to retain them and not utilize that service, it can be costly. So I would say have a specific goal in mind before you engage and be able to clearly articulate what that goal is and what you'd like to receive out of that engagement. So if you've got a six month you know, retainer and you're going to spend 30K, you know, have an idea of what you'd like to get out of it. So, so you feel good at the end of it and, and you can see the results. But it's 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 never too early to engage, and and you should be engaging anyway with with your ideal customers on your social media, constantly telling your story. You know, I always tell people, um, think Kim Kardashian, right, and the Kardashian kind of um, phenomenon, because you know, love them or hate them, they created this whole new business of being paid to post. Right, they get six figures, five figures per post because oh, billionaires. Yeah, because they're consistent and they give their audience what they want. Right, people know what they're going to get when they go to to Kylie's and Kim's and Chloe's um, social media pages. They're going to get great stories. They're going to be engaging. Um, it's going to be compelling. It's going to be new products. You know, they know what they're going to get, and and they expect it. So. Yeah. Um, if you can, well, be I love that. I, I love that. I love that answer. Uh, and just remember, you know, these, these clips are getting on TV, even when you're ready for it, heck make YouTube videos, make a bunch of videos, get yes. that stuff. And so when you finally do make it, uh, when you get on TV, it's not just used once, then it goes out a billion times. You can repurpose anything you do. If your story is correct. Yeah. It's I'm about getting good. your, it's about getting your reps in like Mark was talking about. And when, and, right. and if the first thing somebody's doing is Googling and Dan, you said this before. Um, and you know, if they Google, uh, Dan Jordan and it's ax murder, that's terrible. But if they Google Dan Jordan and they see nothing, that's worse. That's it's worse. worse. Yes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we've got another comment here and, uh-huh. um, this is from, uh, or question. This is from, uh, Jitesh, uh, Kumar, uh, Deej, a question, uh, for both you and Mark. Um, how you manage a client who's really upset with you due to some past mistake and you want to continue to do business with them. Um, how, how do you, uh, how do you do that? Well, I, for me, you know, I've, I've already experienced this. So, oh. um, I had a client that wanted a sales funnel, which is not what I create. So when we, when we did the engagement, I tried to explain to him. I was like, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he was not a millennial, so he didn't understand his social media presence needed to be um, much more robust. And I said, that's what I can do. I can help you create content and we can get you out here so that when people come to you to do business, when they Google you, they don't find nothing, right? We want them to find you and specifically want you because what they've seen and read, this is how millennials do business. 
you know, there are funeral homes that that do entirely online transactions, you know, because you can do everything online now. Mm. You can you can pick out a coffin, you can pick out an urn, you can because nobody's from Atlanta, right? So if you lose a loved one, God forbid, here in Atlanta, you can actually do the whole transaction. You'd be surprised. I've researched this stuff and <laughs> I've, I've worked with a crematory, and, but he wanted a sales funnel. And what I was doing for him was providing content, right, to help improve his SEO and, and the kinds of things people found when they Googled, you know, crematory or, you know, funeral home in Atlanta. So how and did you make it right? So or did you? No. So what we did, we, we ended up because that was what he needed and I didn't do that. I was happy to say, hey, you know, I can help you find somebody who does that. You know, because I don't I didn't want to continue to provide a service that he felt like he didn't need. Right. So sometimes, you know, these marriages don't work out. Right. Right. They, they, they don't work out. And maybe he misunderstood or I misunderstood what he wanted. And we 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 had a disconnect in, in, in what we needed from the engagement. So I thought I was clear with it. Maybe he thought he was clear with it. But but we you know, it was oil and water. So, so we, we decided to go our own separate, but we went our own separate ways and we're still, you know, cordial. You know, I still mm -hmm. check on him, see how you're doing. How's the business going? I hope everything's going well. You know, if I can ever help, if you ever feel like you need what I do, come on, I would work with him again, you know, mm -hmm. but now sometimes, you know, you're not going to be able to make it right. You know, and, and, and like you say, Deej, you know, the customer is number one. So satisfy the customer, do what you have to do you know, within bounds and try to make it, try to make it right as best you can by doing the very best job and offering the very best service you can offer. Outside of that, I don't know, you know, how you change someone's opinion. Right. Um, well, so, you know, I mean, that's exactly right. I, and entrepreneurs, Jitesh, anybody out there, well, you know, you're going to run across that you're going to have not great relationships with some of your clients or customers or what have you. But that's that's one of the things I guess it, that the small business mindset works so well during this time of Corona time. It's because we're very comfortable with change. We're very comfortable with adapting to new situations. It's the larger companies that have policies that you have a hard time working with. When you're a small business guy or an individual contributor as a salesperson, you're able to adapt and change at any time. This is a great advantage during this time for someone like this. It's, uh, you know, in, in, uh, when, when things change economically in any situation, uh, the small business guy finds a way. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneur finds a way to get around it. The large business fires people. Right because they're trying to save money. That's yeah. what it goes. So Jitesh, figure out a way. And if that doesn't work, get yourself a new customer. All right, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it looks like Melvin wants to know if uh, you provide access to markets outside of Atlanta as well. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, the beauty in um, what Zoom has shown us is that you can work from home anywhere and, and with anyone. All right, so, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to interrupt you. I know that's not right, but I'm going to interrupt you because this is a sales situation. The oh, guy is asking are. for you to buy something. So the question is, do you do outside of Atlanta? You say, yes, yes. here's my number. Call me. Let's set something up. Yes. <laughs> okay. Here's my email address, info at marquesconsulting.com or 404-510-6674. You can reach me there. But absolutely. Um, you know, for... <laughs> To um to 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 get bookings in other markets, I mean, you know, we book people from all over the world when we were at Good Day Atlanta, right? So and it didn't matter where, you know, the pitch came from. Um, if you have something that's happening in DC, you know, it's the same process. You know, we we identify the shows um, that have an opportunity for you to go on that fit what you're looking for, that talk to the audience that you're looking for, and we pitch them. And, you know, and that's and that's the one thing that takes a little bit of patience. Obviously, today, Good Day Atlanta is not booking any guests for, you know, the morning after a contested presidential election. Right. Because all people are looking at is what's going on with this election. So, like, you know, we're not going to have Pascal's restaurant on where we have to say, oh, uh, we can't get you. We got breaking news. Oh, nope, you can't come on up. Oh, 
we, you know, we're just not going to do that because That's we, right. knew, you know, you you can plan ahead. So now, if you're an elections law expert, we might book you, right? That's if right. You're, if you're someone over at Georgia State uh, uh, Law School and you're an elections law expert or a constitutional scholar, we'll have you on all day long. And you know, former politicians. So you know, you want to think topical. Um, think about your subject matter and how it relates to the things that are going on in our society right now. And that will help you um, just, just, I mean, exponentially um, get on television shows and, and shows um, where you can show off your expertise and how it applies to what's happening in today's society. Well, that's awesome. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you here. This is great. <laughs> I mean, I learned a ton. You know, so good. I, I'm glad. I'm because, glad. you know, me being the way I am, I'm always thinking, you know, breaking news, the deed right. is coming on. And, but, <laughs> but it's not, it's not that thing. That's terrific. And for all you people out there who want to uh, improve your, your standing in front of your customers and prospects, have them be impressed with you. I mean, it's not a bad idea to get some publicity and to be positioned. So when the time, when the call comes, baby, you're ready and you know exactly what you're going to do. It's all about preparation and uh, even a market and even a, a good looking, strong football player, <laughs> plant based, vegan eating, you know, <laughs> just rocking with big guns. Even he questions himself. Yes, uh, he questions himself when he's starting something new. So in this time, in this Corona time, when when. Really, everybody has to throw things against the window and see what sticks. Uh, finding out what your true story is and being able to uh, display it so millions can see it is probably the best thing you can do to improve your career. You do that today and you got nothing but blue skies in the future. <laughs> You're the best. I'm the Deej. Go get them today. <laughs>